How's it going, everyone? My name is Jake with Trade Confident, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about the state of the market. I do think we are nearing the end of the bear market, but I just have one question for you at this point. Do you think we've hit the bottom, or do you think we have a little bit more room to move down? Let me know just before we even get into it. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Have we hit the bottom, or do we have yet to hit the bottom? Now, this will be a two-part video, so be sure to stay tuned tomorrow, but today I'm gonna to be talking about the fundamentals, the global economics, and why bears versus bulls may think that we have not hit the bottom yet or that we will hit the bottom again soon. Tomorrow I will be going over the technical analysis and showing really important things to pay attention to over the next coming months for crypto. So do not miss that video. It is super important. With that, let's get started. For the bulls, these people think that the recession is priced in, that any further rate hikes are priced in all the way up to 4.5%. Now this comes after continued inflation and it has been announced by Federal Chair Jerome Powell that 4.5% is the target for the interest rate hikes in order to bring inflation back down to 2%, which is their original target. Now with that in mind, we this means we are also approaching the Fed pivot. This is when the Fed no longer continues the 75 basis point interest rate hikes and goes down to 50 basis points or lower. When this happens, it is expected that the market is going to reverse. The next point for the bulls is at least for Bitcoin, the bottom is usually reached by 382 days into the bear market. Now the bear market started on January 3rd and 382 days would bring us to the 24th of November, 2022, which means we are very, very close, just over a month away from the expected bottom on average of the bear markets for Bitcoin. Another interesting point from the bulls is that most of the market is no longer reacting poorly to bad news. As an example, the last CPI report for September showed 6.6% percent core inflation, which is a record that we haven't seen since 1982. This is really not great news. It means that all efforts so far have failed to bring inflation back down and that it's just going to continue going and going. In fact, even making new highs as of again, about 40 years ago. However, when that announcement was made, the market actually jumped up. There was a slight dip before the announcement, but it shot straight back up to structure resistance, back to where it was trading beforehand. Even some coins saw a move higher than it was before the CPI report. So it was really shocking to see bullish news, and it shows that a lot of the market already feels it is priced in and isn't too worried about big news like that happening anymore. This shows that overall emotional sentiment is shifting. It feels like people are feeling pretty fatigued from the bear market and are expecting a move up soon. So that is the case for the bulls. All these points combine for the bullish argument showing that we have already hit Bitcoin's bottom at $17.6 thousand dollars and it's just sideways and up from here. Now for the bears. I'm going to be talking at this point about the bear sentiment, why the bears think we have not hit the bottom yet and could still see another one. The first major point is kind of similar to what the bulls were saying, but the inflation continues rising despite the Fed's best effort. The Federal Reserve has continued making interest rate hikes, but inflation has not slowed down. It did peak in August, but we are again seeing surging prices, which will likely see October showing much higher inflation than it did before. So with that, we are again also seeing a 40 year high in core inflation. None of this is good and none of the policies that the Fed has put in place have helped yet. With that, we can expect that 2023 could be very, very difficult for many and feel a lot like a recession if it isn't called a recession officially by that time. With this and the continuing rising inflation, it it is expected that we are going to at least hit 4.5% interest rate from the interest rate hikes that the Federal Reserve continues introducing. Now, again, it is possible that these are priced in, but especially if it continues after that, if the Fed continues hiking those interest rates, we could see a continued drop. Next is the European energy crisis. I know there is some controversy around this, but there's no denying that energy prices are surging for whatever reason that may be. Europe is having a very difficult time, especially with the Russia-Ukraine war and Russia cutting off a lot of gas access to the rest of Europe, which is highly dependent on that Russian gas. Now, when they're needing that gas at most is going to be winter. So I don't think we've even seen anything yet. And we could see that Europe is going to be struggling through this winter without the power sources that they typically rely on. Due to the rising prices in general, but especially the rising prices of energy in Europe, it's going to be really devastating for a lot of people. And again, it's going to feel a lot like a recession 
recession simply because they won't have the money to invest. They're going to be saving as much money as they can and spending it in order to survive. Because of that, again, this will pull a lot of investors out of the market. Starting tomorrow, October 19th, going all the way through October 27th, we're going to be seeing the earnings report for top five tech companies, including Google, Amazon, Tesla, Apple, and Microsoft. If these are showing lower reports, if they are reporting lower earnings, this means that they're going to start releasing their workforce. They're going to start firing people, which is not great. As companies begin earning less and less money throughout a recession type scenario, the employees are typically the first to go, partly because they tend to be the highest cost. Again, for those employees, it's going to be really difficult. It'll be hard to find employment after that. And as the workforce depletes, which is ultimately the Fed's goal in order to slow the economy down, this is what's going to start happening. And this is why a lot of bears don't think the bottom has hit quite yet. They think it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. And personally, I kind of agree more with that sentiment. Because of this, the bears think that there is at least one more drop before we hit the bottom and that 17.6k will be a support to break soon. Based on these reasonings between the bulls and the bears, at this point, we have strong arguments for both sides. There's a lot of indecision in the market and this causes what I am now calling a crab market. It just keeps moving sideways. And of course, I didn't term that coin, but I saw it recently and wanted to share it with you guys because it's funny and I like it. So right now, it's a crab market. Bears and bulls cannot decide which way that I want to go. So we're going to keep moving sideways for a while. But again, I personally, me personally, I do think we're going to see moves down again before we see moves up. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really, really appreciate it. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out our channel. And be sure to stay tuned again for tomorrow's video that covers the technical analysis portion of the bears versus bulls argument. With that, remember, trade safe, trade confident, and I'll see you tomorrow in the next video. Thank you.